Thank you for joining me today. Today I want to take a look at Daniel's 77s. And I will touch on all of them, but I really want to focus on the last seven of Daniel's 77s because it is the one that causes the most confusion. So bear with me as we go through Daniel and I want to look at the last seven in light of other scriptures. So we will begin with Daniel chapter 9 verses 24 through 27. And this is Gabriel, the Archangel Gabriel speaking, or the Angel Gabriel, I should say, speaking to Daniel. And he says, 77s are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. I'm going to stop there for just a moment and point out that the 77s are to seal up vision and prophecy. Has all vision and prophecy been completed and finished? No. There are so many prophecies that we see in the book, and especially in Revelation, that have not been completed. So we know that the 77s are not yet complete. There are still some years left for us. And who, again, did Gabriel say these 77s are decreed for? He says, therefore, your people and your holy city. Well, there's not really dispute on who the holy city is. The holy city is the city of Jerusalem. That is where God rules. That is his seat. It's the only place on earth uh, that Satan really, really wants I, he, he's prince of this earth, but he really wants to get a hold of Jerusalem because this is God's seat, his throne room. Now, it's also decreed for your people, but who are your people? Well, Gabriel is going to tell us who uh, who are your people, or who Daniel's people are, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And this is what Gabriel says. But at that time, your people... Everyone whose name is found written in the book will be delivered. So Daniel's people are everyone whose name is found written in the book. So the question you would want to ask is, is your name written in the book? Is your name written in the book? Now, what are 77s? Uh, the 77s are groups, when it says 7, it's talking about 7 years. In some translations, you, you will read uh, 70 weeks are determined, but it's talking about groups of sevens. So when it's, we have 70 sets of seven years. 70 sets of seven years. And these sets of seven years are divided into three groups. And let's just think about, you know, seven years. And if there's 70 of them, that would be 70 times seven. That would tell us how many years there are. That would be 490 years, just so we know we're on the same page here. But these groups of seven years are divided into three different groups that we will see in the passage. And I just want to point them out before we read about them. The first group is a set of, there are seven, seven years. The next group are 62 seven years and the third group is one singular seven year period so we have seven sevens or like 49 years and then we have 62 sets of seven years and then we have one singular seven year period and that gives us a total of 70 seven year periods so we'll go back to the passage now and we see Gabriel saying know and understand this from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, and that's another word for Messiah, another term for Messiah. Uh, so until the anointed one or Messiah, the ruler, comes, there will be seven sevens and 62 sevens. So here we see again that chronological order. We see the seven sevens and the 62 sevens for a total of 69 sevens. Uh, for, and that, and we're told by Gabriel that that that, that lump of time of sixty nine sevens began 
when the decree to rebuild Jerusalem is given. Not to rebuild the temple, but to rebuild Jerusalem itself. And it's going to, those groups are going to end. Well, we see they end with the anointed one coming. At this point, that's what we see. Daniel was in captivity in Babylon at the time this, this vision or this prophecy was given to him. We see later that Nehemiah, the king's cupbearer, did get an official edict to rebuild Jerusalem and were given the date that Jerusalem was to be rebuilt. And if we count, start counting for 69 times 7, which I believe is 483 years. <laughs> I, I may be off a little bit there. I have not doing the math in my head. But uh, 69 times 7 years uh, from the day that Jerusalem began to be built until the Messiah would come, uh, we can pretty much, we, the people could have counted from that day forward and known their Messiah was going to come at that very time. And we see that Yeshua chastised the people because he said, you don't know the time of your visitation. And we, as New Testament believers, think, how in the world could they have known? Well, because he told us. He told Daniel by sending Gabriel to give him this vision of the 77s. Back to the passage, we see... And it will be built, oh, I'm so sorry. Let's do this again. Okay, it will be rebuilt with streets and a trench, but in times of trouble. That's Jerusalem. And after the 62 sevens, remember there were seven sevens, then 62 sevens, and then one singular seven year period left. But after the 62 sevens, meaning there's been a total of 69 sevens so far, the anointed one will be cut off and will have nothing. And as we know, Yeshua was cut off. He was killed. He was uh, he laid down his life, but he, he was killed. That's what it means by cut off and will have nothing. Now, this next part of the passage is what is often misunderstood or confused. And I'm going to introduce other scriptures after this passage to help clarify. So just bear with me. The people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end. And desolations have been decreed. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. That would be that, that very last seven that we were talking about. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering and on a wing of the temple he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him now some people believe that the ruler who will come is speaking of Yeshua but I'm going to show why that is impossible in light of other scriptures please stay with me for part two where we talk about who the ruler uh, who is coming really is and how we can be positive about this fact.